Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Good evening. Jeremy Corbyn has addressed the Labour conference for the first time as leader, offering a new kind of politics to create a more caring society. His promise is to stand up for families losing benefits, for tenants in insecure rented homes and for young people locked out of the housing market. Well, they were all loudly applauded by delegates and he underlined his opposition uh, to renewing the Trident nuclear weapon system. But he was criticised by some people for failing to address the UK's budget deficit. This report by our political editor, Laura Kunzberg, does contain some flash photography. This is a long way from a town hall meeting. <laughs> they queued to see him, who was an outsider in his party, but now he's their star. And he wants us to think he's just like you. Jeremy Corbyn. <laughs> they were pleased to see him clapping for two minutes before he even began. Any chance we could start? <laughs> and started by laughing off what he sees as the wilder attacks from the press. Jeremy Corbyn welcomed the prospect of an asteroid wiping out humanity. <laughs> Asteroids are pretty controversial, and it's not the kind of policy I'd want this party to adopt. His first serious point he beat others to the leader's job convincingly, and things are going to change. I've been given a huge mandate by 59% of the electorate who supported my campaign. I believe it's a mandate for change. Let me be clear. Under my leadership, Labour will be challenging austerity. It will be unapologetic about reforming our economy. He's determined to cut his own figure still wanting to scrap nuclear weapons even though the party said no to a debate but there's one thing i want to make my own position on absolutely clear and i believe i have a mandate from my election on it i don't believe that a hundred billion pounds spent on a new generation of nuclear weapons taking up a quarter of our defense budget is the right way forward i believe i believe that our country should honour our obligations under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty and take a lead in making progress towards international nuclear disarmament. And he'd oppose any plan for airstrikes in Syria, even though many of his colleagues might not. We all want all of the atrocities to stop and the Syrian people be able to return home and be free to determine their own destiny. But the answer to this complex and tragic conflict can't simply be found in a few more bombs. Noticeably absent was discussion of how to balance the books, but with promises to build council houses and selection in schools came rapture on traditional Labour turf. But here was the wider, if fleeting, pitch for those outside the party. Jeremy Corbyn said his views, his values, are your views too. I know there's a big British majority for building a more equal society, for eliminating poverty and homelessness. We're a rich country. These things are not necessary or inevitable. They can and must be changed. It's that sense of fair play, these shared majority values in Britain, that are a fundamental reason why I love this country and its people. But the real rub for Labour's establishment are his thousands upon thousands of eager new supporters. And Jeremy Corbyn's ready to transform the party in their image. Young people and older people are fizzing with ideas. Let's give them the space for that fizz to explode into the joy we want of a better society. And the closing attack on the Tories was what they all wanted to hear. They expect millions of people to work harder, longer, for a lower quality of life on lower wages. Well, they're not having it. Our Labour Party says no. The British people never have to take what they're given. There were huge roars of applause from Labour's growing crowds. What they didn't know was that nostalgic message had been written long ago for former Labour leaders. There was such a 
first here for him to excel. Many members have waited to hear this kind of speech for years. But it was one of a protester, an activist, Corbyn the campaigner. But it was also a chance to tell the rest of the public what he would do. He's going to take them on. All the people that come into politics because they want to make a lot of money for themselves, forget about it. Yeah, it was inspirational. Um, I thought it was one of the best speeches I've ever heard at a Labour Party conference, certainly for many, many years. You seem slightly less than enthusiastic. No, it was a good speech and it was absolutely clear, but um, if anybody thinks the work is over, they're mistaken. The work has only just begun. A different leader, a different kind of speech. His more caring politics was loved in this hall, but there is nothing inevitable about a wider public embrace. Laura Koonspark, BBC News, Brighton. Well, the enthusiastic response in the hall was very clear, but uh, what about views in those parliamentary seats which Labour failed to regain in the election in May this year? Our correspondent, Sean Lloyd, has been to the key target constituency of North Warwickshire to see how voters there responded to Mr Corbyn's speech. A former mining town in the heart of the Midlands, Bedworth has been a Labour stronghold in the past. It has a Conservative MP now, but is a marginal seat, one Labour want to win back. Just because I've become the leader of this party, I'm not going to stop. To do that, Jeremy Corbyn needs to convince voters here, like Mick Brennan, who tuned in to hear what he had to say. Does not everyone want to care more care in society? The thing is, it's, people have got to pay for it at the end of the day, and this is what I don't think he gets. I think he thinks he can just, like, magic it out of nowhere. But his style of politics found favour with some. It's a breath of fresh air in, in politics at the moment. Why do you say that? Well, he seems straightforward. You ask him a question, he answers it. Uh, he, he's what I would call proper Labour. There was a list of promises for people to digest, including eliminating poverty and homelessness and solving the housing crisis. Renationalise the railways? Uh, yeah, I think it's a good idea because uh, they people aren't out there to make profit so they can make it cheaper and invest more into the service to try and make the service more accessible, better. And he's also saying in, that more money needs to be spent on public infrastructure in this country. Where is the money going to come from? This is the point, you know. Is it going to be more taxes again? Um, people can't afford that at the moment. They're serving up supper in the fish and chip shop. This customer had listened to Jeremy Corbyn's speech earlier. I felt he was very personable and he was really refreshing. Um, however, it's still a big question of how he's going to pay for it. That's the, that's the question. Jeremy Corbyn's speech went down well with Labour delegates, but the public's appetite for his policies has yet to be tested. Sean Noyd, BBC News, Bedworth. But let's go back to Brighton and the Labour Conference and Laura is there for us, Laura Kunzberg. Laura, what in your view did Mr Corbyn set out to achieve today and did he get there? Well, Hugh, he stroked their souls here and they cheered him to the rafters. This was the same kind of speech that he gave in the leadership contest, the one that packed out town halls and community centres around the country. But he is the leader now. And this was campaigner Corbyn, a political phenomenon, yes, but comfort zone Corbyn too. And there's not much concrete sign yet that this is a leader at this stage who's ready to find a way to talk to those millions of voters in the middle. And the political rules he's trying to disprove suggest it is still those votes that win general elections. Laura, thanks very much. Laura Kinsberg, our political editor in Brighton. I've been getting away with it all.